Today, I will show you how to calculate the home range of animals using the method of mini complex polygon using QGIS. We start from Moodle, the Moodle page of our data analysis module, and we scroll down to the section of this week where we have the coordinates that we use for the practical today. This is the Tsaobis GPS Complete 2005. File. This is a, a CSV comma separated value file that we can save on, in this case, I save it on my desktop. And uh, it is a file that contains coordinates of uh, two troops of baboons that were followed by researchers over several months. And in this file, we have a few months from the 2005 season. Uh, one of the researchers involved in this project is Dr. Harry Marshall, who is probably also involved in collecting these coordinates. So I have now saved the, the coordinates on desktop. Let's have a look with uh, Microsoft Excel to what we can see inside the file. So these are, uh, uh, there are a few columns of data. The first column is for the troop and we have the two troops. So let's zoom in a little bit. We have the two troops, J and L. And uh, then we have uh, information about the date of the observation, month, year and day. Then we have a timestamp, and this is a code a ID of each observation, the time of the day when the observation was collected, and then the two coordinates of longitude and latitude. In this case, Y, of course, is a, um, a latitude, and X is longitude in degrees. And then uh, the researchers, in this case, I think Dr. Marshall, have created the two more columns to simplify the analysis of this data set. One with the information about the month and one with the information about the year of the, of the data. And then this last column, troop month, takes together the information about the troop and the month, which is useful if we want to subset the data plot some uh, smaller uh, data set or to conduct analysis on a particular month and year of the troop. I opened QGIS. This is QGIS version 3.10. This is a free open source software that you can download at home. And uh, I start a new project where I, I will plot these coordinates. The first step that I need to do is that I need to read the coordinates. Now you cannot see the, the new bar on my computer, but what I'm going to do is that I um, select, um, the, I go to the layer menu, add layer, and add the limited text layer. This window opens where I need to select the file from which I need to read the coordinates. Um, so I, I choose the file, and in this case, I open that Saobis GPS complete file. I can check that the coordinates that I'm reading, that the file is interpreted correctly, uh, in particular, the delimiters that I use, by observing that the columns in this preview reflect actually the data that I have in the file. If, I, for instance, I didn't have the comma separator in this case, I, or everything would be condensed in a single column and I wouldn't uh, be really able to, to analyze the data, to, to open the data. The other thing that I need to, to check is that the, I'm plotting latitude and longitude in the right field. In this case, the name of the columns is the same as the name of the field, so it's difficult to get it wrong. But you usually have something like longitude and latitude. And now you need to think about uh, latitude uh, is something that uh, we usually plot on the y-axis of a map, 
while longitude is something that we usually plot on the x-axis of a map, okay? So I need to make sure that I get it right here. And then I need to specify the geometry. In this case, these are, are geographic coordinates of latitude and longitude. So I need, need a coordinate reference system, CRS, that is appropriate for this. And for most uh, practical purposes, you can just use this WGS84, which is a model of the entire surface of Earth, which is quite accurate independently of the region that you are going to focus on. Of course, if you focus on a very specific region, you may have a slightly better model, but for our purpose, this WGS84 is what you need. And uh, so once you have selected the good reference systems, you just add the coordinates to the map and close. And you see that we see the, these data points correspond to the positions of uh, all the observations that we have in the data set. And there is still no map uh, uh, behind the data. And all the, the points are the same color, so we don't know which points correspond to different months or to different troops of baboons and so on. This is, is all the information that we don't see yet in this uh, map. So what we want to do now, one of the first things that we want to do is to add a map, which we do with from this X, Y, Z tiles menu. Now I have already in my uh, version of QGIS, I already have this menu and I open one, which is a Google satellite. This is a connection to Google satellite images that will download the Google satellite image and uh, plot as a new layer on my project. You probably do not have this connection yet. So what you do is that you go on the XYZ tiles and then right click or control click and create a new connection like this. You need to give a name to this new connection. Let's say, I don't know, my con connection to Google satellite um, today, say. Um, of course, you just give a name that is easier, simpler than this. Let's call it Google satellite or something else. But because I already had other connections, I gave another name. And then I uh, paste the, the web address for this connection. This is something that you need to copy from somewhere else or to, to find. And, and now I can just drag and drop. And I see this map appear and the coordinates have disappeared. This is a desertic region in Namibia. We, we can see easily there, are, there is a, a river, not much water flowing into the river, but uh, this is an important place for uh, baboons because there is some vegetation along the river. So it is a place where they can uh, probably find food and sometimes also water. Uh, I don't see the coordinates of my baboons, but I can just see if I drag the layer with the map behind the layer with the coordinates. Now, uh, this is also something that I can check. I can zoom out to check that we are actually here in uh, Namibia. And here, not too, too much. Okay, and we can see that here is the, where the coordinates come from. So I check that everything is fine. And if I want to zoom back to the original uh, layer, I just go to the layer, right click or control click, uh, and then uh, I need to uh, zoom to the layer, which is here. Okay, and now I see these coordinates on the map. I can check that the coordinates follow the geography. You see they tend to follow the river, which tells me that the projection to the map is good. They, they, I can see that the animals interact with their environment in, from, from the good projection of coordinates and map. But now all the colors are the same. So what I need to do is that I can uh, change the color. Then I go to the properties tab and here in the symbology section, I can change different aspects of my graph. Let's say that I want them, uh, I like yellow, I put them in a bright yellow color and I can also change the size of the marker 
and then apply and I see the new coordinates appear here in yellow. But what I want to do today is more to have different colors for the two troops. I go to this categorized uh, item and I, I want to give different colors based on the troop of baboon. Okay, so I go here and uh, select troop, I categorize by troop. And then classify, I see up here two labels for J and L, and then another marker for all other coordinates, but I do not have anything else, so I remove it. And I can also change the color of these. For instance, I, I may want to have a troop in, uh, uh, say, yellow, and uh, same symbol size, and another troop I can use, uh, say, red, for instance. And I go to pick a color that I like, Okay, and then uh, apply, and I see now the two troops. We can see easily that these two troops uh, occupy different regions. They don't overlap too much, except here in this area. And there is something that I need to tell you that you probably cannot know, which is in this particular point here, there is a water source. So this is a place where uh, the two troops of baboons need to come often for instance, to find water. And this is part, probably one of the reasons why the, the coordinates overlap in this particular point. Okay, now what I want to do is, uh, I said before, I want to calculate the home range of these coordinates. But before I can do this, I need to go and check that I have the toolbox visible in the processing menu. Now it is appeared and I, then I go back and make the toolbox visible again. And I will use a tool that is here in the vector geometry uh, section, which is the um, minimum bounding geometry here. So I select the minimum bounding geometry. I want to plot the uh, service so GPS complete as a, my layer file. And then I want to add a field that I use to categorize this uh, data by troop in this case. I want a home range for each troop. And then the geometry type, I choose convex hull, which is a synonym for minimum convex polygon. And then uh, I can run and I see already two big regions appear, which seems good except that they are the same color and my data points have disappeared behind these regions. So I, what I can do is that I can drag and drop the layer behind the layers with the coordinates. And then I can also change the colors and appearance of these regions. So I, I, I navigate to the property tab and again to this symbology and set to categorized, in this case by troop again. So classify, I remove the one that doesn't apply and apply everything. Now I see the regions, but there is something that else that I may want to do here, that the regions are clear, but I want to change maybe some other aesthetic parameters of these regions. For instance, I may want to set the uh, different color, or in particular different transparency so that I can see the map behind the region. I do it for J, and here I do it for L using a slightly different method. Now I change the transparency. Let's see how it comes. And this seems good. Another thing that I may want to do is to have colors that are consistent for these two troops. Say that I use colors in the reddish range for one troop and colors in the yellowish range for the other troop. So I'll go back to this property menu and I can change the color individually of each of these regions. So I said that I, this one would be uh, red. I choose another slightly different value of red from the dots. And the other troop would be uh, say something around the yellow and I choose uh, another value of yellow, slightly different from the one they use for the dots. Okay, apply. And okay, and I, this seems quite nice, but I lost the transparency for this one. So I need to go back and, and do it. So I, I put back the transparency to 
Okay. Now uh, that we have these home ranges, we can use them to calculate the area of the home range directly from QGIS. But before I do this, I need to go in the settings of the project. So in the uh, project menu, properties. And uh, here you have the units that are used to measure, to measure distances and areas in the center of this. And as you can see, by default, this is in meters and square meters, or maybe something else for you, I don't know, but we, because we are measuring large areas, we, do, we want something bigger. We want kilometers and maybe for the area, we want square kilometers. And that uh, once we have done this, we can just, uh, continue with press OK and close. Now we can, uh, to, to calculate the area, we go to the menu, to, to, to the layer, we select the attribute table and you can see that there are already some values for area and perimeter, but these values actually don't make any sense right now because the values for area and perimeter come from the units that we had before, which are latitude and longitude. So we need to recalculate them. I go here to the, um, uh, edit tab and I can assign new values here to uh, the different um, uh, information that I have here. So ID, troop, area and perimeter. Of course, I do not want to change the ID or the troop. I only want to recalculate the area and the perimeter. So be careful not to do this. I just not to, to reassign the ID. I go to the area and I go to the geometry tab and then this area with the dollar, which assigns the area for each particular uh, component for each. And then update, and I see that the values of area have now changed to something that is meaningful around 23 and 61 kilometers square for each troop. But the perimeter is still in the old units, so this is wrong. I need to update the perimeter as well. So I go to perimeter and I do exactly the same thing except that this time I go to the geometry tab again, but instead of picking area, I need to pick the, uh, uh, the, uh, no, no, the perimeter, the perimeter. So I go down to perimeter with the dollar here. And of course I need to remove area and geometry. I just want the perimeter. And when I'm ready, I press on okay and I update all the calculations and I see that now the numbers for perimeter make sense as well. Okay, so I've saved, the, I've done the area and perimeter. I, I forgot to say, these values of area and perimeter are something that you may want to save on your computer because you can make graphs from those values. For instance, to check how the area and the perimeter of the two troops differ or as we can see later, how these values can change over time. So the and a last thing that we can do is that we can add the decoration. So the, in particular, the scale bar for the, for the map. So we enable the scale bar. We need to select maybe a font that is a, the, the good size. And in this case, um, let's say that, he, uh, I don't know, uh, let's, let's pick uh, a slightly that, 36, let's do a font size. I don't know about the font type. Uh, let's go with these parameters. And then uh, we need to decide uh, where we put the bar. In this case, let's put it at the bottom right of the screen, but maybe a little bit shifted, uh, say to 30 millimeters and do the same for vertical from, from the corner. And uh, okay, and you see that the scale bar applies. It is five kilometers for this distance, which probably makes sense also given the values of area and perimeter that we obtained before. And I can zoom in and out and the scale bar remains there. And this is a figure that I could take a screenshot or, or export in other ways. I always need to be careful when I export these figures. If there is too much information, then uh, the figure is not clear. So I could decide that I remove the map as I did now, or maybe that I remove the data points uh, because I, if there are too many layers, too many data points, then the map becomes uh, unclear. And so there is no point in exporting a map that is not 
possible to read. And so we, uh, we have done this part. Now I want to show you something else. We can, uh, we have this information, not just about the troops, but we could also want to uh, categorize for each troop and for each month. So I first try this um, to categorize by troop month and I, I need to replace the previous categorization. And I see that now I have a lot of uh, colors for each troop and each month. If I do this, apply, I see that, uh, okay, it is very confused uh, on the map uh, because I have many colors. Um, yeah, so, so what I could do is that instead I, I, I go back, Let, let's for now, let's go back to the original categorization for this, only by troop. So I, I go back, classify again, yes, and I apply, okay. And what I want to do instead is to calculate the home range for each troop and month. So, so that uh, uh, I can have a measure of how home range changes over time. So I go to the same menu, minimum bound, bounding geometry, but this time as feed, I choose troop month. And again, geometry type is the minimum convex hull and run. So now I get a huge number of, uh, of uh, areas, each for one for each month, that I can, uh, uh, for which I can calculate the area in the same way that I've done before. Okay, I could also change the, the color of these areas uh, as before. I can do all, all this, this previous analysis. But what is important is that I can visualize maybe all the areas all together. They don't make any sense because they are not visible on the map. So I can decide that I uh, only choose what to visualize. So let me go back for a moment to the, the change the colors again for the, um, for the original uh, data points. Okay, I, I could decide that uh, in this case, I could decide that I, I remove some of these areas so that they focus maybe on only one single month, like here, but I also need to do the same for the coordinates. So I go back to the properties and categorize again by troop and month so that they have different groups for uh, different, different symbols for each troop and month apply and okay. In this case, I can do the same and, and just show the coordinates for the month number 10 uh, here. So uh, this makes a figure that I could export that is not too cluttered and it is quite nice. And it seems that in, on this particular month, the baboons are uh, closer to the river, as you can see. Maybe the area is a little bit smaller, even if the minimum convex polygon doesn't reflect this very well. But we can imagine that if this is, for instance, a dry month, which is possible, then uh, uh, the baboons will spend more time closer to the river because it, this is where the vegetation is persisting a little bit longer. And uh, uh, this, this is something that maybe is reflected in the home range. Unfortunately, th th from this data, it is not so clear because of course they converge closer to the river, but they need to move a longer distance along the river. And I, I can uh, try and do different maps for each month and maybe export each map separately. Let's have a look uh, very quickly here. So what I do is that uh, here is, uh, for instance, for month 11, have the data and the home range is much more uh, circular. And then I could do the same for, uh, for all the months. Let, let's, uh, let's just have a look quickly at uh, the change in the uh, habitat hues by these baboons over uh, each month. And I try now every single, re as every single month. Let's just do it with the, the coordinates. So this is uh, uh, June and then uh, July and then August and September. We see in this case, they are getting closer to the river. So this is probably a dry season, October. Um, they are still in the river in November here. 
but they seem to move back to use a larger area. Okay, so you have seen how to uh, plot coordinates on QGS and uh, on a map and how to measure the home range with the minimum method of the minimum convex polygon.